Hi, I'm Oliver Pinninger, the best marketing intern Three Wheel has ever had, and this is episode 154 of the Two Bar Brothers in a Microphone podcast, where we talk about the people, process, and technology to work together better inside enterprises. This episode was recorded on March 8th, 2018. In this episode, Danny talks with Tim Colson about dashboards and how they've become a critical tool for managing information. He talks about using Jira, an issue tracking SAAS product from Atlassian that his project team uses to make sure they stay productive and focused on the right tasks. He also talks about an energy company that we worked with where dashboards helped them understand the value that they brought to the customers. As a bonus, Dana will share a recent story that's just a little embarrassing. Well, maybe more than a little. Enjoy this episode and thanks for listening. Welcome to the Two Bald Brothers in a Microphone podcast. I am here with a dude that's bald. It's Tim Colson. You want to be my brother? I will be your brother. My brother from another mother. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, in the afternoon on a Thursday. We're wrapping up things hopefully before too long. And uh, Tim is ready to make his commitment for this quarter to get his podcast done. I'm ready. You're ready for this. And we're going to talk about Jira. Uh, Jira uh, specifically, but then I'd like to expand that a little bit more into a conversation of dashboards. Wonderful. Um, because Jira is a dashboard, uh-huh. um, which I've found very helpful. But uh, but then it made me think about a lot of the solutions I've provided for various customers uh-huh. related to dashboards that I thought are you know, very helpful. Now, Jira, I, I, um, it's a product from Atlassian. And uh, we knew them from way back from doing stuff with Confluence. And um, they also have some, uh, they have like HipChat, which is some like Yammer type of functionality. And uh, um, with Jira, I've always thought it's it's usually used for issue tracking right. primarily. Yep, issues. So yes. I work on a support site. So I work, um, I'm a consultant for Three Will and I work what? for a, <laughs> for a, for a, a company that has a support site, uh, so they're in the tax and accounting uh, software business. So they have a support site that supports uh, their products. Uh-huh. So, as a person working on their support site, you know we have tickets uh, that get entered, either indicating new functionality that the company wants to add to the support site, or if there are some enhancements they that they want to make, or you know, heaven forbid, there's a problem um, on the support site that we need to resolve, then uh, JIRA tickets get created and assigned to, to people. So it's not just tickets, it's also enhancements. So you're using it right. to, like to, like to manage a backlog of things you're going after? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. In, in a lot of ways, they're like our product backlogs that we use. When 3 Will actually manages a product, you know, we use more of a, a scrum methodology, so we'll have product backlog items. So essentially... Um, Jira, in in our case, is is a backlog mm-hmm. of things to do, whether it's enhancements, whether it's bug fixes. But you know, within there, you can specify. Okay, is it a a bug fix? What environment is it happening? Is it in production? What's the criticality? Mm-hmm. Uh, does it need to be fixed as a production patch, or can it be slotted for a future release? Okay. And since we're talking about dashboards, is there like a personal dashboard that shows you what to work on next? I mean, that's probably the key thing is you're just, there's plenty of things out there to work on, but what's the next thing you're working on? Right. So it's a very uh, flexible, customizable tool. So our manager uh, that our project manager or mm-hmm. our, our boss on the project, he has uh, created a dashboard and, and we, uh, we don't, like I said, don't necessarily use Scrum, but we do have re- a release schedule. So mm-hmm. basically, we um, schedule our Jira items around releases. So okay. within a release, we'll determine which Jira items are going to be worked on, which enhancements, which bug fixes are going to be worked on, and then those each of those Jira items can get assigned to a person. So at a release level, we can see okay, here's all the Jira items within the release. But on that dashboard, then you can see among all those JIRA items that are for the release, which ones are assigned to Tim, mm-hmm. you know, which ones are assigned to Danny. So then you can start to break it down, and then each day as we 
go through our status, we'll you know, pull up the JIRA items assigned to that person and go through each of those JIRA items and say, okay, what's the status of this JIRA item or, or do you have any impediments on any of the JIRA items that you're working on? Mm -hmm. Do you, so do you have like a daily stand up or something? Yes, along we do. Those we have a, a daily meeting a daily and, meeting. and this dashboard becomes the foundation mm -hmm. for those meetings. So that's the real value of it because our team is remote. We have team members in India. We have team members in Chicago. We have team members in Las Vegas. We have uh, team members in Alpharetta. So having something that we can all look at, even, even though oftentimes we're using a screen share, you know, we can all individually be looking. Uh, you know, it's it's a, a public site, so it's publicly accessible. It's a it's a cloud based solution, uh -huh. uh, so we're all you know accessing it from our local location, and then you know usually the person that's running the meeting you know is pulling up the dashboard and sharing it through screen share software. But essentially, it becomes a, a one thing that we can all look at to agree upon. You know, here's our scope. Here's what you're working on, and then. Each day, you know, throughout the day as I work on these items, then I can go update the status. I can move it from a under development to a QA so that then the QA person, you know, sees that, okay, now this has moved into my queue mm -hmm. so that now it's time for me to do QA on this item. And then that person, you know, once they have gone through and done the QA work, then they can push it to a, a UAT status. So all these different statuses, you know, are driven, uh, you know, within these dashboards that way you know along every stage of the development process you can follow these items and see where they are and you aren't using confluence or hip chap or any hip chap hip chat <laughs> hip chat uh, uh in in conjunction with these you're using other collaboration tools or using like this skype is, or what do you like, yeah we'll if you use want to talk about skype for business okay you know, we'll We'll use that for you know chatting uh -huh. with each other, or we'll use um, Adobe Connect is generally what we use for our screen share. At least the person that initiates most of our meetings. We also use a lot of the Skype for Business chat as well, uh -huh. uh, screen sharing. So, so so everything we do is essentially remote. So uh, remote software, especially you know Skype for Business. I like it a lot. I like using my headset at my laptop that way I can you know continue to have access to my keyboard without uh, a phone on my shoulder so. and this isn't a client that's dabbling with teams or that's that's just just Skype for business right Skype now. for business yeah. yes okay nice what else about dashboards what do you what's been your experience tell me yeah so um you know one of the customers that we did a work we we did work for in the past um what they did is ran energy efficiency programs for electric companies. So electric companies generally don't want to build new infrastructure. They want to maximize their investment in, a, in their current uh, resources that they've developed. So one way to do that is to try to minimize uh, power usage during peak periods. That way they can avoid, you know, maxing out their power. So there's various ways they do that. There's things they install on people's air conditions to be able to remotely control them or tune them down during peak times. There are other programs where they'll go into low-income houses and they'll do caulking and insulation mm -hmm. uh, for the people to just help reduce their power usage. So essentially, um, this company would contract with power companies to run these programs. So you know, part of their contract agreement was they, they had a various measurements that, you know, they wanted to be able to measure, you know, month over month and, you know, year over year to see, you know, are they hitting the targets that were estimated, you know, for them to get the value for the service that they were purchasing. So essentially we created a, a dashboard that would allow the customer to go in and be able to look at each of these different, uh, different, measurements for all the different types of programs that were uh, running to see if they were hitting their targets nice. so um, you know this also included like some school education where they would go in and they would give kits to students which included some light bulbs and some other 
educational material on you know ways to reduce power consumption. So. I actually, uh, I, I bought one of those smart thermostats for when I moved into this new house. Right. And as part of that, there is a program that Sony EMC, that's who used for electricity, mm-hmm. that they have where they'll help reimburse some of the cost for it. And then you, they'll end up, you know, uh, lowering your bill oh, yeah. uh, because they can turn it down on peak times, which I thought sure. was yeah. pretty neat to, yeah, that's, to be uh, able to do that. And that's essentially one of the, one of the different offerings that, that this uh, company provided was that capability. Nice. So, uh, so we were able to actually, this dashboard, uh, it showed information, uh, at a utility. So this, this was a program that was run across multiple, uh, power companies, uh, and in this case, we actually used a, a cube on the back end and had it secured so that each company could see their own data, but could only see their own data. They couldn't see other companies' data, but then uh, people with privileged access could then look at the data across the different companies. So, you know, dashboards can be created in such a way that, you know, they're secured by users but then um, you, you could take for example a, a sales sales reps where sales reps could see their own numbers however a manager could then look across all the different sales people and see all the different numbers and see them at an aggregate level so you can see where these dashboards can be you know uh, find value for different different levels of people within a process and you can secure the data uh, as necessary to, to only allow people to see what they should see but it can essentially be driven from the same same set of data being rolled up to different levels so that you know different people at different levels can make you know the appropriate decisions and this the energy company that you're talking about that's not related to jira that this is using like sql server right this was a sql server using okay. power bi okay um as a as a front end for that data nice but generally the i guess the idea is that you know just the value of dashboards is as you think about the processes that you're involved in on a daily basis whether that be sales whether that be some uh, business process um, there's oftentimes you can think of data that's really valuable for your team to to look at and and talk about together so as a software consultant you know working on different development tasks, you know, Jira is very helpful for us to plan out our releases mm-hmm. um, for, uh, you know, a utility company trying to make sure they're getting the value out of the contract that they've yep. made with this energy efficiency company, a dashboard that lets them, you know, start to look to see, okay, are the are the goals that were established that would make this program beneficial to uh, to us or those goals being met and being able to go to a dashboard and look at that data and see okay are the numbers being hit uh, is it, certainly a value if you turn around you'll see my dashboard up on my whiteboard i've done <laughs> yeah i see a graph <laughs> It looks like it's going from uh, low left tech. to right, low to low to high. <laughs> yes, so it's that's low usually tech. A, that's usually a good trend. Yeah, we're so. we're looking. Well, that's what I need to stay stay above that red line. So that's the, I'll be monitoring that. Okay, that's so. your uh, goal. Yes, so. that's my goal. So like right. I'm I'm old school with this. So yeah, and and certainly, um, you know, the, obviously the nice part about uh, many many scrum teams do use you know, whiteboards as their, quote, dashboard to be able uh-huh. to track their status. You know, products like Jira are very nice when you do have a uh, geographically segregated team. That way you can, you know, all look at the same information without uh, having a webcam shining on your board. But uh, Nice, nice. So, yes, yeah, just a nice tool. And, but, and, I, and I, was, I was thinking about the value of that to our team and our collaboration. I was thinking about just dashboards in general and, you know, as a as a business process, it's often good to consider. You know how, you know what data would our team find valuable to be able to look at together, and collaborate on that data. To you know that way we have kind of a common vision, and they're able to to see the progress that we're making against that against that vision. So. One, I, I have to tell you a story to wrap us up here. All right. It's, it's funny. And I it like makes, stories. It makes fun of me. So it's my favorite type of story. <laughs> so when we moved to this uh, new house, I was, um, 
the heater downstairs in the basement, you know, I did all the things that I thought I should be doing with it, with changing out the air filter and, you know, all the home maintenance things that I thought were necessary. And as I mentioned, I switched out the smart thermometer on the first floor and it worked out great. It was like Alexa. I could, oh, I'm like, no, she's listening. She's listening. I'm not going to say anything. But I can set the temperature using her. Um, we know we were done. <laughs> she who will not be mentioned. Um, so I thought that was awesome. And then um, it was about a month or two ago, upstairs, the, the, just no matter what we did, we couldn't, the heater wasn't turning, cranking out heat. And uh, I went around and I said, oh, I have no idea what this is. It's like, I, th I thought of taking care of everything here. So we called up the, the home warranty company because they're still under warranty, or we extended it out a year. And so they came out and was like, okay, okay. Um, and I sh showed them upstairs and I showed them the thermometer and I, or I turned up the thermostat and, and showed them how no heat was coming out. And then I'm sitting there and I'm walking downstairs to go down to the basement to show them the heater. And then he says, is okay if I go up there? He points in the laundry room to point up, go up to the attic. And I didn't realize I had another heater <laughs> up in the attic. Oh, wow. And so I go like, oh, I know this happens to you sometimes. But, uh, yeah, I get the idiot of the day because I didn't know. I said, you're going to have, when you go and change the filter, it's going to have like a year's worth of stuff in it. Mm. And so that's... That's what it was. He pulled it out. We we ended up making a sweater out of that. And, oh wow! Um, <laughs> he switched it out. There were some things he had to reset, but it was it was easy enough for him to fix. He was like, "You you don't know how often this happens to us." So I was like, mm. that, "I'm sure you're saying that just to make me feel a little bit better." But <laughs> that's my energy story of the day. <laughs> so you know, back to our dashboard. He yeah. probably had a dashboard of <laughs> of appointments for the day. Yes. He saw your appointment yeah. and. Dashboards are good. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Well, thank you for taking the time to do this. Appreciate all your hard work out there and, uh, and good stuff. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Danny. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.